For years, Tesla, BYD, Panasonic, and a few other giants have dominated battery technology, not because lithium ion is perfect, but because nothing better has actually worked at scale. But then at CES 2026, a small European company claimed they've cracked the impossible, a quote, solid state battery that charges in minutes, lasts decades, works in extreme temperatures, uses no lithium, and is already shipping. If that's true, it wouldn't just disrupt Tesla, it would upend every major battery roadmap on Earth. But here's where things get interesting. Some of the most impressive claims, five minute charging, extreme cycle life, massive power output, are exactly the things that batteries are worst at, and exactly the things that supercapacitors and theoretical quasi capacitors are best at. So today, before we talk about Tesla, hype, or fraud, we're going to do something more fundamental. We're going to clearly define the difference between a battery, a supercapacitor, and a hybrid system, and then ask a bigger question. Is Donut Labs building a revolutionary battery, or a very clever system that lives in the gray zone between truth and marketing. Let's take a look. Before we start, a quick shout out to my channel sponsor, Joa. They make amazing accessories for your Tesla and other EVs and have incredible warranties and customer service too. In fact, I use their accessories daily. Be sure to check the link in the description to get 5% off a fan-cooled phone charger, a portable tire inflator, a fold-out lap table, and so much more. And they make perfect gifts for you and your EV-loving friends too. So check out the link to get 5% off, and now let's get back to it. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I have pages and pages and pages of notes about this video, and I've already done a video on Donut Labs and their CES announcement. You can check it out up here if you're interested. But this entire topic has blown up so much in the past couple of days that I felt it was worthwhile doing an entire video just on Donut Labs' claims and what I think is actually going on here. So what I'm going to do here real quickly is at a very high level describe what batteries are, what supercapacitors are, what a hybrid system of capacitors and batteries would look like, and then what quasi-capacitors capacitors would be. The first three systems are real and have been in existence for quite a while, but the last one, the quasi-capacitor, has been up till now a relatively theoretical idea, but recent technological advances that Donut Labs may have access to right now could actually be making quasi-capacitors real for the first time, and I'll discuss why that would be such a critical breakthrough and why it would change the landscape of energy storage entirely. So first, let's talk batteries. Batteries are things you're very familiar with, from the little AAA batteries that are in your TV remote control to the batteries that are in a Tesla or other EV and large storage facilities and stuff, they all use a system of stacking an anode with an electrolyte between it and then a cathode. And of course you have to have lots and lots and lots of surface area to make this all work. And what happens is you move ions between the cathode and the anode, whether you're charging or discharging, it moves in different directions. But basically they're ionized molecules like lithium ion, which is why that battery is called that. Those move, they swim through a fluid, they go back and forth. If you're charging, you're pumping energy into it and the ions move in one direction. If you're discharging, then you're getting energy out and the ions move in the other direction. So an analogy might be thinking of pushing baseballs across a swimming pool, right? You can put the baseballs in the swimming pool on one side and you push them and they'll very slowly float to the other side and then they'll stay there assuming that the water is still and there's no currents and stuff, right? So this is, it's not a perfect analogy, but you can imagine that the ions are these baseballs and you're pushing them towards the other side. And by doing that, you're charging up the battery, but you can see that these baseballs move very, very slowly. A capacitor, on the other hand, at its simplest is just two metal plates and they carry an electrostatic charge that would be something like if you rubbed a balloon on your head and your hair stood up or if you shuffled your feet on a carpet in the winter and then touch a doorknob and you get a spark of static electricity that's basically what they're doing they're just storing static electricity and so instead of moving entire ions through a liquid you're moving electrons through either air or a vacuum so think about how much faster it is to throw a golf ball across the distance of a swimming pool rather than pushing baseballs across it so capacitors can charge and discharge way 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 more quickly but electrons on a plate have much lower charge density. You can't store nearly as much power in a capacitor, even a supercapacitor, which is basically just a rolled up capacitor. It looks a lot like a battery, except that it's got an air gap inside of it instead of an electrolyte gap. So while a battery could store hundreds of watt hours of power within it, a supercapacitor can generally store tens of watt hours of capacity. So their energy density is about 10x too low to use in a real application. But of course, there's a couple of big downsides to batteries. Number one is it takes a very long time to charge them up. It also takes a long time to discharge them, but generally speaking, three hours of driving, let's say you're using an electric vehicle as an example, if it takes it three hours to discharge, that's not that fast for a modern battery, but you want it to charge up in five minutes. That is orders of magnitude faster than the discharge, and that's the reason why you commonly have to wait 15, 20, 25 minutes to charge up your battery, even when you go to a supercharger that can theoretically charge at very, very high speeds. A supercapacitor, on the other hand, can charge very, very quickly, like on the order of just a few minutes. 
And of course it can discharge very quickly as well, which you might need if you're doing something like the ignition laser system. At Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, they use supercapacitors to charge up their lasers to do the fusion tests that they do. In a car, of course, you wouldn't need anything that radical, but you could discharge that quickly. The big problem with supercapacitors, like I said, is number one, they have very, very low energy density. And number two, those electrons really don't want to stay on the plates long term. So you can charge them up really quickly, but then they want to discharge relatively quickly too. So whereas a battery could store most of its charge for days or weeks without losing too much charge, a supercapacitor will lose its charge in a matter of hours. And that's not particularly valuable in most uses because you want to store the power long term. So next up, we've got hybrid systems, which are supercapacitors that are connected to batteries. So your batteries are your long term slow acquisition storage. And on the front of that, you put supercapacitors that can charge and discharge very quickly. So again, using an electric vehicle as an example, you can imagine these supercapacitors, they can take a huge amount of charge and they can charge themselves up. And so maybe you have like five kilowatts of supercapacitor charge capability, right? You can charge that up almost instantly and then they can discharge slowly into the batteries and charge the batteries up as they discharge. And then of course the supercapacitors can take on charge more quickly again. And if they had to discharge quickly or something like that for some reason, they could discharge much more quickly than batteries as well. So this is a very cool system and it could allow you to charge much more quickly, at least for a period of time, but it's not going to solve the fundamental problem. And also these supercapacitors are going to take up room in your car. If you think about it, if your skateboard underneath the car is already taken up by batteries, where are you going to put these supercapacitors? Because even five kilowatts worth of energy storage is going to take a lot of room with supercapacitors. And this brings us finally to quasi capacitors, which sort of ride the line between capacitors and batteries. Energy is stored via fast reversible surface redox reactions. I'm not super schooled in chemistry, so I don't know exactly what that means, but it's way, way faster than going through an electrolyte. According to what I've read, it's not purely electrostatic, so it's not like a capacitor, but it's not bulk diffusion either. You're not pushing these things across a swimming pool. It doesn't take a long time. What you need to make this work, however, is you have to have nano structured materials. You need to have materials with very, very fine nano structure. And as it turns out, carbon nanotubes are a fantastic enabling technology for something like a quasi capacitor. So if you use a quasi capacitor, you get battery like energy density, you get capacitor like power density. In other words, you can charge and discharge very, very quickly. And you get a much larger cycle life. One of the big problems with batteries in terms of charging and discharging them is that the electrolyte starts to create dendrites in the anode and the cathode, and that causes degradation of the battery itself. So that limits the battery life. Well, with this type of technology, you don't really have to worry about that. So you can get much longer cycle life. You also potentially get better thermal behavior. And note that each of these claims is things that Donut Labs is claiming right now. And very importantly, you get much less self discharge than you would with a traditional supercapacitor. That and energy density are the two big problems with supercapacitors and why you can't use them as long term energy storage. So let's take a look at this graph here. I think this shows things very, very effectively. So what you've got is you've got charge discharge speed on the y axis here, and you've got energy density from low to high on the x axis. And you can see that a traditional battery has very, very high energy density, right? It's very, very close to the right hand side of the x axis, but it's got very low charge and discharge speeds. A supercapacitor on the other hand is the kind of the opposite. It's got very, very fast charge discharge speeds and very low energy density. So it sits in the upper left hand corner. A hybrid battery and supercapacitor thus far is the best solution in terms of meeting in the middle and getting good charge and discharge speeds plus relatively high energy density. But the energy density is still too low to be used in a lot of applications. Again, things like electric vehicles and stuff. But then you see the quasi capacitor that is way up there all by itself. It has high charge and discharge speeds and also has relatively high energy density. It doesn't charge and discharge quite as fast as a supercapacitor and also doesn't have quite the energy density of a traditional lithium ion battery, but it's really close in terms of both and it has the best of both worlds. And also because it doesn't use a liquid electrolyte, it has much better longevity and is able to deal with temperature extremes much better. So with that in mind, let's think about what Donut Labs has claimed. They've claimed 400 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. They've claimed five to 10 minute charging. I think that's to 80%. They kind of imply 100%, but I don't think that that's actually true because I saw a graph that actually shows it gets up to about 80% as a linear. It charges very quickly and then it starts to tail off. So five to 10 minutes might be to 80%, but still that would be more than adequate. That would be amazing. Also, they claim 100,000 charge discharge cycles, which is at least an order of magnitude more than the best lithium ion. You don't really have to care about whether you charge it up to 100% or not. You don't have to, you know, baby your battery like you do with a lithium ion battery. 
They also claim extreme temperature tolerance. In other words, they can go to very cold and very high temperatures. They also claim not to have any lithium or rare earth materials in their batteries. That sounds like something that's a very different chemistry, right? They claim they are already shipping the batteries and that Verge Motorcycle is going to be using them in quarter one distribution of their $30,000 e-bike. And we'll get back to that in just a second. And then very importantly, they also say that they have already achieved price parity with lithium ion batteries at, I think the pack level, maybe the cell level, but they mostly talk about the pack level. What we haven't seen is any third party validation, although they claim that that is coming soon. No published patents yet, no disclosed chemistry yet, no teardown. And even though they say there is a ton of interest, there are no OEM confirmations beyond Verge motorcycles. So from the claims, it really seems like Donut Labs has discovered a way of mass manufacturing quasi capacitors. And you might say like, well, why hasn't somebody else done that? That's a pretty obvious solution to the problem. Well, the problem is carbon nanotubes are probably the enabling technology here. And yes, that's just a one atom thick sheet of carbon molecules that's wrapped into a tube. This is kind of a miracle material for a lot of different reasons, but one of them is its electrical performance. It, it does amazingly well at transferring electricity in one direction and blocking it in others. It's a really good conductor in one direction and insulator in the other. And of course, carbon nanotubes, people discovered this a while back. In fact, I think maybe about two decades ago or something, but the problem is mass manufacturing it. I mean, getting any more than just tiny, tiny samples of carbon nanotubes has been basically impossible up to this point. But here's where things get really interesting. Nordic Nano is a strategic partner with Donut Labs. And what does Nordic Nano do? They specialize in industrial scale carbon nanotube processing. In other words, their research has been directed to making carbon nanotubes at mass scale. What they've developed apparently is a screen printing or layered nanomaterial deposition where they're able to create these nanotubes at significant scale. And if they're able to do this and if they've exclusively licensed this with Donut Labs, which is possible at this point because Donut Labs does not seem interested in licensing this. They say they want to manufacture everything. So they seem to be very, very confident in this technology. But if Nordic Nano has been able to do this and they can combine that technology with what Donut Labs is doing, that would enable quasi capacitors. And Donut Labs has claimed that they're going to be able to do one gigawatt hour of storage in 2026, which isn't, you know, that's not a lot of scale, but it is enough to manufacture these niche motorcycles at, at $30,000 a unit, these are not going to sell like hotcakes. We're probably talking about a couple of thousand of them during 2026 at most. But certainly Donut Labs at a gigawatt hour would be able to produce enough batteries for these motorcycles. And then of course that would prove out the technology and they would be able to refine the manufacturing process and everything. But anyway, if this scales by 2027 or 2028, we could be looking at 10 gigawatt hours and then moving up from there. So if this actually is, like I think it is, a quasi-capacitor that Donut Labs and Nordic Nano have co-developed, this is something that really will be a game changer. Will it displace Panasonic, BYD, Tesla's battery operations and things like that this year? No. By 2028 or 2029, if they're able to scale up like they say they're going to, this really could be highly disruptive. Not only would this be far, far better battery technology, but it also would get rid of the rare earth mineral bottleneck with lithium ion, cobalt, nickel, manganese, and all of the other minerals that are currently geographical and geopolitical bottlenecks to battery manufacturing. So if I were a battery producing or EV producing or storage battery producing company, I would be taking a very, very close look at what Donut Labs is doing, and I would be pre-ordering a bunch of those bikes so that I can tear the batteries apart as soon as they ship and see what the heck it is they're doing. All right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Is this fraud? Is this overhyping? Or do you think that Donut Labs actually has a new technology that's going to fundamentally change the way that we store energy. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. While you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps things out. And if you want to help out even more, give me an early birthday present and be able to follow more of these kinds of topics as I discuss them, please consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.